How you doing? I'm doing. You doing? How you doing? I'm doing. <laughs> it is um, Stark Naked Truth live stream for In the Beer Cave with Rob and Ashley. And yes, as you can see, we are once again in the Beer Cave. Absolutely. Uh, you can catch uh, the full edited and produced version uh, tomorrow morning on the YouTube channel. Search out Ash uh, In the Beer Cave with Rob and Ashley. Be sure and give us that thumbs up and subscribe to us so you know what's going to be there. You can go check it out anytime. You can also check us out on Spotify and on Facebook in the Beer Cave with Rob and Ashley on Facebook. Um, right. We've got some new microphones. So we're trying these out today. They sound, so far, sound good. I'm thinking everything's going to work out pretty good. As we scroll along on the edit, on the video portion that's going to be on YouTube, you'll have all the information about emails and addresses and phone numbers of our proud sponsors for this week. Now, this week is, uh, of course, 4th of July weekend, so I'm sporting my, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, um, DD, DD214 alumni shirt. There you go. Uh, those of you who don't know what a DD214 is, it is, uh, if you've been in the military, that's your discharge papers that tell you the status of your discharge, honorable or whatever, uh, your dates of service, and uh, your uh, medals, your achievements. So yes, I, I do. Is that kind of like the Boy Scouts merit badges? Uh, a little bit more important. <laughs> a little bit more difficult to get. Hey, I, I made think, it. To, hey, I made it to Eagle Scout, y'all. Well, no, hey, that, that's not our easy <laughs> challenge. But uh, I didn't make it. I had a sash full of uh, medals. Well, merit badges. Well, we always wore ours over yeah. here. Yeah. I, I had I had a four banger at one point, which uh, which meant. Uh, um, had four rows of medals. Cool. Um, uh, can't really remember all the medals <laughs> I had, but you know, none were none were were, uh, were achieved in combat because I was a broadcaster. So, but you still got medals, and you had to have certain achievements. Well, there's certain goals. certain medals you get. You know, once you graduate from from boot camp, you get a, uh, a basic military training, whichever branch you're in. You get a, uh, a you know. If you uh, are a marksman, uh, oh, okay. sort of, you know, get a certain uh, score on, on the firing range, you get a medal for marksman. Um, then I was overseas for a short tour, so I had an overseas short-term term, uh, medal. And then when I extended, I got an overseas long-term. I got that old. I got an achievement medal for uh, being an outstanding airman, which I, must, I pulled the wool over everybody's eyes to get that one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there there were several, and there were a couple other service medals that I had, but uh, yeah, none, none achieved by combat. You know, you see these guys with with these medals from here or there. Yeah, those are the guys. I don't care if you're an officer or enlisted. I want to salute you because yeah. uh, you've been through some stuff. Man. They they got it. And like Rob said, this is the Fourth of July weekend, and I want to tell you what, the crowds are here at Panama City Beach. We have lost your audio somehow. Mine. What? How? Is your microphone, did your microphone go off I don't know, did it? I think it did, because I'm not seeing a light on your side. Uh-oh. There you go. All right, I'm back. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Don't tell me the batteries are dying. They're brand new. Yep. Anyway, uh, it is 4th of July weekend, and people are here in the Panama City Beach area. The weather's not going to be visitor-friendly, and I'm, I can't stress enough, people, if you're in around or coming to Panama City Beach adhere to the flags. We have beach flags, we have green, yellow, red, and double red, and they're already predicting that it's going to be double red by tomorrow afternoon as a prediction, and that means the water is closed, it is not safe. You can go to the beach, enjoy the beach, enjoy everything the beach offers, but do not get in the water. I, I just, We've already had too many fatalities, and when you do go on the water, yeah, the surf is rough, everybody wants to get the little boogie board and go ride and have fun. It's very dangerous, do not get in the water. It can get very expensive and cost you a night in jail. Yeah, I was gonna say, law enforcement does enforce that uh, they do. With, with citations, and it's not because they're trying to be difficult, they're trying to, you know, it's not one of these money-making deals where they got so many, no, they're trying to save lives. Public safety, and you're putting the risk of the first responders at, at in harm's way too. So let's just be uh, cautious 
everybody, please enjoy. Enjoy your time down here. There's things, lots of things to do when the weather's really crappy outside. There's a lot of other things to go do, other venues. We lost you again. Yep, dad coming. All right, well, time out. Hang on. Time out. Well, I'll, I'll keep the live stream going. But, I gotta get uh, it. Ashley's gonna. But I'll, I'll uh, kind of reiterate some of what uh, Ashley's saying. Also, too, don't forget, you know, this is a holiday weekend, and on the beach, the uh, our law enforcement is going to be out in mass, and so if you're going to be out drinking. Even if it's on the beach, in your condo, and you decide you're going to go down the beach to have dinner or something, drink responsibly, be careful. Traffic is going to be, especially on back beach and front beach roads, that are, it's going to be pretty packed up. But um, just be careful and drink responsibly. Just We don't need, we really don't need any incidents. Uh, we have too many of them on a daily basis anyway. So, but... What I love about Panama City Beach on 4th of July is if you do go down to the beach, you see fireworks up and down the beach from the east end to the west end. You'll see them starting tonight, and they won't end until Sunday night, if not even further into next week. And there are some people who um, will bring their own fireworks displays down that are just amazing. I mean, they almost rival the, the city uh, displays. Uh, They'll shoot them off. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's like telling a bum not to pee in an alley. Yeah. They do anyway. If you don't buy them in Florida, don't shoot them off in Florida. So um, I did purchase some fireworks today in Florida, and they're Florida legal and safe for the grandkids to shoot off. There's a field right across the way right here. It's away from all the buildings and all that stuff. And um, just be mindful of the youngsters and the sparklers and all that stuff. You know, safety first. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was a story, I, we're not going to do it, but I read it earlier. Uh, guy really wished he would have heeded the warnings that he was told a long time ago. He had to have his fingers and thumb reattached because he took one of those rolling candles and held it in his hand while it blew up, going, hey, y'all watch this. Yeah, his fingers would shoot off too. So that's not that's not good. That, that's just not yeah, good When we were kids, we used to do that, hold a rolling yeah. candle, candle and shoot each other. Shooting yeah. each other with them. Yeah, that's not smart. No, nah, yeah. you're lucky to be alive. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise we're still alive to this day, yeah. Well, I have a, a couple of things for the 4th of July. Uh, first one I'm going to do, this is from a uh, Johnny Cash song uh, that he did years ago. And uh, I pretty much like just about everything Johnny Cash uh, has ever done. And I'm going to kind of paraphrase a little bit. We're kind of proud of that old ragged flag. You see, we got the little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware. Then it got a little powder burn the night Francis Scott Key sat and watched it, riding, say, oh say, can you see? And it got a bad rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson's tugging at the seams. It almost fell at the Alamo besides the te beside the Texas flag, but she waved through it all. She got cut with a sword at Chandlersville. She got cut again in Silo Hill. There was that Robert E. Lee Beauregard and Bragg and the South Wind blew hard in that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big old in that one from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp and low a time or two. She was in Korea, Vietnam, she went where she was sent by Uncle Sam. She waved from our ships upon the briny foam, and now they're about to quit waving her back here at home. In her own good land, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which it stands has scandalized throughout the land. She's getting thorough, thorough bare and wearing thin, but she's in good shape for the shape she's in. Because she's been through the fire before, and I believe she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning, and we bring her down every night. We don't let her touch the ground, and we fold her up tight. On the second thought, I do like to brag, because I'm mighty proud of that old ragged flag. At this time, we have a short clip that we're going to play on the uh, video uh, version. Uh, so those of you that are on Spotify or on the live feed, you'll need to go check out the YouTube uh, channel in the Beer Cave with Rob Ashley to catch that. So if you'll just bear with me for just a moment, please. I remember when I was a kid, 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 I was a k
remember a teacher that I had. Now, I only, I went, I went through the seventh grade. I went to the seventh grade. I left home when I was 10 years old because I was hungry. And I used to, this, this is true. I work in the summer, I go to school in the winter. But I had this one teacher. It was the principal of the Harrison School in Vincennes, Indiana. To me, this was the greatest teacher, a real sage of, of my time, anyhow. He had such wisdom. And we were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day. And he walked over, this little old teacher, Mr. Laswell was his name. Mr. Laswell is his, uh, <laughs> he says, I have been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word. I, me, an individual of a committee of one pledge dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity allegiance my love and my devotion to the flag our standard O oh glory a symbol of freedom wherever she waves there's respect because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United. That means that we have all come together. States. Individual communities that have united into 48 great states. 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose, and that's love for country. And to the Republic, Republic, a state in which sovereign power is invested in representative chosen by the people to govern. And government is the people, and it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people for which it stands. One nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation and justice the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others for all for all which means boys and girls it's as much your country as it is mine and now boys and girls let me hear you recite the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country, and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance, under God. Wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that is a prayer and that would be eliminated from schools too. All right, we hope you enjoyed that video clip. And now we're gonna pause for a moment with a word from one of our sponsors. For all your riding apparel and biker needs, Biker's Edge is gonna be your place. They're located here in Panama City. Hours are Wednesday through Sunday, 10 to 5. So I want you to call 850-624-6206. Make sure they're around and not out celebrating the 4th or riding their bikes. They have all your riding apparel and accessories. Military ID gets a 10%. Uh, make sure you tell Pat that Rob and Ashley sent you her way. And we hope you enjoy everything that Biker's Edge, if they don't have it, I bet you Pat can get it for you. 
And they'll be on the road sometime soon. They've they, got the trailer they got, ready, to, ready to go hit some they, of these uh, biker rallies and car shows and, sure and bring themselves to you. They sure did. Um, one of the reasons I wore this DD214 shirt, and uh, Ashley and I talked a lot about this show before, and we don't ever really want to get too political. We'll, we'll, we'll satirize politics. We'll make fun of politics. We'll make jokes. But uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to wear this particular shirt was that um, a lot of things are going on in our nation today and a lot of things with our military and with our flag yes and I just I felt the need to give a shout out to uh, those current folks that are in uniform I know that there are a lot of things happening that you may or may not disagree with and I don't really care but as long as you are uh, as long as we're combat ready and we can defend our nation the way we need to defend our nation. I'm, I'm okay with whatever. I, I really, but I just, but I also want to point out the camaraderie that at least I had with the folks I served with overseas and here stateside. Um, we hung out together. We lived together. We worked together. We laughed together. On occasions we cried together. Uh, we lost together. Like I said, I never saw combat, but we did, we did see some losses because of, of other operations that were, that were going on at the time. And one of the things that I can honestly say that some of the people that I respect the most in the military that I served with, some of my best friends to this day, they were black, they were Asian, they were Indian, Native American, they were, but you know what? When we were there together, wearing the uniform together, serving together, men and women, we didn't see race. We didn't see color. We didn't see religion. We didn't see creed. What we saw was we are all wearing this uniform. We're all here together, especially when you're overseas or especially if you're in a combat station. We are in this together. And we may disagree with some things, but when push comes to shove, I got your back. Oh, yeah. And I know you've got mine. And I just, it, it, it hurts me. And I, and I talked to some military folks lately, active, and some retired, and some like myself who, who did six or eight years and got out. And those of us who are true veterans um, don't like the trend that we're seeing the military go. And uh, I hope this gets corrected very, very soon. But again, Thank you. If you are active duty, if you are retired, if you've ever worn this uniform and served with pride, thank you so much. It's one thing I can honestly, honestly say. Nobody thought when I was younger that I was going to be the guy that joined the military. Nobody. <laughs> I partied my way out of uh, college, ended up joining the Air Force. It turned out to be the best thing I ever did in my life. It gave me self-discipline, it gave me self-worth, it gave me a career that I had followed for the most part in my adult life. It gave me uh, overseas experiences that I never would have had. It gave me friendships and camaraderies that I hold on to and hold dear to, to, this, to day. this day. And I am so proud that I wore that uniform and I miss wearing that uniform. I couldn't squeeze my chubby butt into that uniform <laughs> if I had to right now. But I will tell you this, uh, for the most part, every veteran that I've talked to, they would probably try to squeeze back into it if they had to. Our oath still stands to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I did not serve in the military, but I do have family members, and I married into a very military family. My wife's dad, a couple of brother, brother-in-laws have all served 24 plus years each. Uh, have served so I am not only grateful for the family members but for their service to our country and I couldn't be prouder of uh, my extended family that well you know has, and the family uh, members served. family members serve in their own way yes they they don't get their due in many in many respects there are deployments there there's separation times there are times of hardship um, so it's hard to keep a, when that's going on it's hard to keep a family going and it, it's trying. I can see that. And you know, I have to have to acknowledge. Uh, you met Stephanie last week, um, my my lady, whom I love, 
Uh, her dad just passed away not too long ago. He was a uh, full bird colonel, flew B-52s. Oh, wow. Okay. So you, he and was a colonel? Cool. Yeah, he, uh, he got a medical discharge because of uh, uh, Vietnam and some actions that were taken in Vietnam. But uh, yeah, proudly served and, and was a full bird colonel. I would have had to salute him every day <laughs> if, uh, if he were still around. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm so proud that uh, that I'm at least somewhat associated with a man like him who really did great things for our nation. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, and Kurt Ram. Love you, Kurt. He owns Alibi Beach Club or Beach um, Beach Lounge. Um, Kurt and uh, Mike, both uh, military veterans, both retired. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Love you both. See you soon. All right. Well, we're going to dive into some of our news of the week that you might have missed and maybe might want to know about. Just or don't really care. Or don't care. But anyway, here it is. <laughs> now, I hope I got my mic fixed. I like this story. A U.S. inventor has created a machine that turns beer, cocktails, and other drinks into soft scoop ice cream. I'm in. Especially in the beer cave. Of course, ice creams based on the flavors of favorite beverages already exist, but it usually means sacrificing the alcohol content because the freezing point of alcohol is so low compared to the rest of the ingredients. Good point. Yeah. However, the below zero machine can take any beverage and crystallize it in under 30 minutes, keeping the alcoholic beverage exactly the same, meaning you can get drunk on these tasty treats. Stephanie, that's what I want for our wedding <laughs> gift. There's a new technology about the, when it happens, <laughs> uh, the... The new technology comes out of Hinkley, Illinois. Oh, of course, <laughs> Illinois. It's either Illinois or Florida, one of the two. I'm not sure, you know... The inventor says it was truly works, uh, like we say, the gel bear hugs the alcohol itself and turns it into the ice cream. So there's a technique to it. Uh, in the beginning days, we used to use nitri a liquid nitrogen to make below zero, but now with the new machines, you can put it in, in a cone and it's ready to eat. I like it. Is He's, this... Is this for retail, but the machine uh, itself, or is no. the ice cream just for retail? They're going to market the machine to bars and restaurants to serve in their establishments. So I'm kind of thinking it'd be out of our price range to have one here in the cave. Well, but, you know, we could all, always get a restaurant license. We could do that. It could be uh, in the beer cave, bar and grill, must have exclusive um, <laughs> membership rights and privileges. Soft serve ice cream. Soft go. serve ice cream to go. <laughs> I'm saying to you. Um, speaking of soft serve ice cream, now if frosty you, treats on frosty a hot treat day. On a hot day, <laughs> we give this to Ashley because he has longer arms. These are some folks I'm, I'm uh, closely associated with. Really great folks. Sandy Bottoms Beach Rentals. They uh, pretty much a new business this year. Uh, Skip and Shelby, and you can go search Sandy Bottoms on Google. You're going to find a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to see their website, it's sandypcb.com what what they do is if you're down here or if you're, if, even if you're doing a staycation you want to go take the family to the beach you want the tents you want the chairs you want the, the ice chest the coolers you know you want all that stuff but you don't want all that equipment down there you give them a call at 850 let me put my old man glasses on real quick 850 319 9648 and they will bring everything down to you. Tents, umbrellas, chairs, setup packages that include delivery, breakdown, worry-free for you. All you gotta do is show up with your family, enjoy the day, and then take off. And I'm gonna tell you, lugging all that stuff down to the beach is a full-time job because it's downhill going out, it's uphill coming back out. Trust me, I got a cart that I lug. Yeah. It's, it's a job. Now, also, if you want to enjoy one of the uh, beautiful, and we do have some beautiful sunsets over the Gulf, if you want to enjoy one of the sunsets, it can also set you up with a uh, beach bonfire, propane uh, fire pits, perfect way to enjoy the sunset, no smoke, no no ash, no worries. Also, if you, would, uh, if you are wanting to plan a beach wedding or a beach party and you want a DJ or you want somebody to uh, officiate, 
guess who's going to be the uh, music master from the walking down the aisle, the, uh, the official ceremony, to your reception on the beach? That'd be me. <laughs> but we can also, if you, if you don't have an officiate, we can actually uh, provide you with an officiate. So, like I said, a lot of packages are available. Go to uh, sandypcb.com. See everything that's available for uh, for rent and see the packages that are available. You can go from anywhere from just a tent, a couple of chairs, all the way up to the whole, you know, the the whole shooting, match. shooting match. Or you can give them a call, like I said, 850-319-9648. Sandy Bottoms Beach Rentals. So, great folks. I know them personally. I know them well. They'll take care of it. Go check them out. All right. Some more news this week. A vehicle crashed through the front of an Asbury Park driving school while the driver was trying to parallel park, police said. The crash occurred around 12.20 p.m. on a Monday on Main Street, according to the authorities. The driver was initially stuck in the vehicle but was removed unharmed. It appears that while the driver was attempting to parallel park, he backed up onto the curb and then into the storefront of ML Driving School. <laughs> One summons issued for careless driving. Uh, Mr. Larvin, the owner of ML Driving School, told the Asbury Park Press that the driver had no connection with the school. There were no other reported yeah. injuries. That, I, I would go to my grave <laughs> saying, no, he had nothing to do with this school. I had nothing to do with him. He well, was not a student. He was not an instructor. He was nothing. Let me ask you a question. You got a ticket, right? Go to driving school. Does that knock some of the points off your driving record? He's already been. He just went to well, driving school. <laughs> and and to, I tell you the truth, the owner of this driving school, I'd almost give him a full ride scholarship. <laughs> and then make him my poster boy. This is what he did. This is how he's driving now, thanks to ML yeah, driving that's school. <laughs> and you get two points off your insurance. <laughs> and if you are arrested, you can call Steel Boys Bail Bonds. We'll get to that a little bit later. <laughs> In Fort Dodge, Iowa, the Fort Dodge Police Department is urging drivers to pay attention to the road signs after they say one woman learned the hard way. Now, I drive a truck, and when a lane is getting coned off for work and all that stuff, and they've got these big signs, and they got the arrows flashing which way to get in, you see it. But there's always those couple of people that ride all the way up and they're going to get in the last minute. Well, I can't do that in the big truck, but anyway, it, it's irritating. It is irritating. A 37-year-old woman drove past the construction barriers into wet cement. Buried her car. Huh. Construction crews blocked off the road beforehand and crews reportedly tried to stop her. She drove into wet cement while attempting to switch lanes. The driver claims she was following GPS. I can just hear it now. Recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. Well, you know, did she have her GPS like right in front of her and, face while she's driving? She probably was treating it like this and looking around. I don't know. But, you know, hey, honey, there's a driving school up in. Up in yeah. <laughs> yeah, and plus, you know, when you look up and you see those barriers, there are two pedals that are very available and accessible to your feet. One is. Uh, called a brake pedal. It's the, it's the big long one in the middle. Right. And what that does, it accommodates you to slow down and to actually come to a complete halt. And so I'm, you're not driving into barriers or wet cement. And I'm sure yes. that's in the first course of driving school. Yes. Law enforcement urges people not to ignore road signs and not drive around barricades. <laughs> wet cement. I, I mean, most people, most of most of the uh, crews are putting down asphalt. I can't, I can't imagine she buried her car in wet it's cement. Wet cement. Wet oh. cement. That's karma coming back at you, baby. That's Sorry it. about That's that. That's it. A Central Florida man is accused of stealing nearly a million dollars in CARES Act money that was meant to help struggling businesses during the pandemic. Prosecutors say he used the money that he obtained to go on a spending spree. Bought a house, a car, a truck, a motorcycle, a diamond engagement ring, and a wedding band. I heard, I heard this story before. Yeah. 
He formed a business, Just Us Construction, in Philadelphia a decade ago. So he had fraud on his mind anyway. <laughs> Even though his business license was expired three years ago, he had moved to Florida. He filed for the money through the Paycheck Protection Program, to help, which was designed to help people through the pandemic. Fellow investigators said Brown made false claims that he had 25 employees and received nearly a million dollars in PPP money. He's now facing bank fraud and money money laundering charges. Well, you know, my business license expired for JPR Entertainment about uh, about 10, 10 years ago, give or take. Yeah. I had uh, five hundred employees. Yeah, <laughs> that's the ticket. Yeah, as far as you know. Yeah. <laughs> Early Sunday morning, a Johnson County woman was awakened to the sound of a car crashing through her carport. What is this about people crashing cars it's, into this buildings? Is, and, this, and is a, this is a bad week for driving. Yeah. Uninjured, the driver initially fled the scene, but returned later and was charged with a DWI. The crashing car ripped through the power meter from the house, forced the residents to spend the night with relatives. This is at least the tenth time a car has come through this intersection like this, said the son of the woman who lives there. All right. Move. <laughs> Duh. Move. So apparently, I see this every once in a while, especially in some smaller towns here in Florida. It's a T intersection. They build a house right there, and if you do run that stop sign, you're going to wind up living room, carport, garage, whatever. The home sits on a road at the end of another road where there's nothing but a stop sign to prevent cars from entering the yard. Move. Yeah. Just move. Or put a big, big sign in your own yard that says, This is a house, please turn. Or turn around, one of the two. The owners. I mean, yeah. But that shouldn't be up to the owners. That should be up no, to the, especially the same time. The DOT to put up a big barricade. Something. Uh, something like side something, rails. Or something, something flashing. Like of course, you know, it's probably the, they probably have the bedroom well, in the front and there's yellow lights flashing. Well, no, you can just put night. reflective. Oh yeah, like cattle, tape. cattle, cattle, yeah. fence up. Anyway, just move. You tired of people just coming move. in your house? Just move. Yeah. How much is your uh, property worth? How much is your house worth, sir? Well, it used to be about a three hundred and fifty, yeah. uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollar home, but since it's been hit ten times, uh, I'll that, give it to you. I'll give it to you for ten grand. Does that include the car? <laughs> yeah. It's a bit <laughs> dented and scratched, but you know. <laughs> now this guy's my hero right here. A father shot a man that he claimed was looking into his child's window in northwest Harris County early Monday morning. Harris County Sheriff's deputies responded to a call at a home in the West Little York Road around 2.30 a.m. Upon arrival, they found a Hispanic male shot outside a nearby gas station. According to the parents, the man was looking into their underage daughter's window. The little girl reported was screaming. When she saw the man, her parents came running. Once they saw the man, the parents reportedly ran outside, both armed with guns. Officials know that both the man and the woman are licensed handgun carriers. According to the father, both he and the mother demanded the alleged peeping Tom to lay down in the yard and wait for police to arrive. The man did not comply and walked across the street to a gas station. The husband went to tell the clerk to call 911 that's when the man reportedly charged at the mother, wrestling the gun out of her hands. In the fear that the man was going to start shooting, the dad fired his weapon, shooting the man three times. However, the father said he believed he shot the man four times, twi uh, twice in the chest, once in the stomach, and one out on the, once in the side. The man was transported to the hospital in serious condition. Father said his daughter had complained in the past about seeing someone watching her through the window, but the parents didn't believe her. No one else was injured in the shooting. Dad, you're a hero. Yes. The only thing I can say that you did, I would have done differently, is that if I had come outside and seen you peeking through my daughter's window, you'd been shot in the ass. Yep, that fast. Right then, right there, no warning, no, no, hey, get on the ground and wait for, no, no, no. I would have taken the heat for firing, for discharging a firearm in town. You'd have been shot in the ass, and that's where exactly where I'd have got you, right in the ass. And, and the, uh, 
at the price of bullets these days, warning shots are just too expensive. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I want. In fact, you probably be shot in both cheeks. Yeah, you'd be walking looking like you got a corn cob up your butt for the rest of your life, there, dog. Trust me. Good job, Dad. Good yes. job. That's all I got to say. Well, if you are being stupid like that and uh, you decide that you want to invade somebody's privacy, first of all, don't do it. It's like Chris Rock says, you know the best way to avoid trouble with the police? Don't, don't break do the law. <laughs> exactly. But if you do find yourself in trouble for, uh, for something like that, or even sometimes it's no fault of your own, but you, you, you find yourself uh, incarcerated, give Steel Boys Bail Bonds a call. You can find yourself in trouble real quick, but they can get you out real quick. Professionals been doing business for over 20 years, 24 hour service, and make it as convenient and fast as possible. They know how the system works and how to handle your problems. Of course, they obviously work within the system, but they do know how to handle your problems. Uh, they uh, service Bay, uh, Calhoun, Washington counties, and surrounding counties around the area, so you can give them a call anytime. Their, their phone number 850 215. 2608. You can also find them online, bailbondspc.com, or you can just visit them at their location on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. It's uh, 1003 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Panama City. Again, great folks, really great professionals, been voted best of bay for bail bondsmen on several occasions. Uh, they, 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 are, they are no nonsense, but they're very professional and very, very easy and, and good to deal with. So give them a call. Again, the number, 850-215-2608. You can find them online, bailbondspc.com. And now, our favorite part of the show. Well, the whole show's our favorite part, but I like this part. Idiots in jail. Which I think I actually did this too soon, but okay. That's okay. But it is brought to you by uh, Steel Boys. Steel Boys, no. Yeah. No, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> A Maine man found himself rearrested after authorities said he attempted to post bail for an initial offense with fake funds. Counterfeit money. Counterfeit money. Mr. Deschance was originally arrested by York County Sheriff's deputies on Sunday on an outstanding theft warrant. According to deputies, the bail commissioner was contacted after he had enough money to cover his bail, but two of the $100 bills he was using were counterfeit. He was denied bail and returned to jail with an additional forgery charge. He tried to pay bail with, with counter counter counterfeit, counterfeit, money. Money. counterfeit money. Okay, this isn't just an idiot in the news. You are stupid, and I don't spell that with a U. S-T-O-O-P-E-D. <laughs> You're stupid. He later posted bail using authentic U.S. Well, currency. bless his heart for going and getting the real thing, you know? Like, you know, okay, I just got to go to the ATM. Oh, wait a minute, I got some cash in my pocket. Yeah, I, can handle, take, I got enough to handle that. You take Monopoly money? <laughs> a Tennessee couple is facing attempted murder charges after they allegedly opened fire at a Burger King following a dispute over a spicy chicken sandwich. Not spicy enough or too spicy? Enough? Too spicy. Too spicy. Enough. Police report that Tra Travis McKinney and Kanoa Halliburton got into an argument earlier this month with Burger King workers at a restaurant in Memphis. The duo, cops say, complained that Halliburton's chicken sandwich was too spicy. After the initial altercation, McKinney and Halliburton departed for a few minutes but returned in their Ford Escape and allegedly fired multiple shots from the road into the parking lot. Two female victims were hit by gunfire while two other women were also shot during this time. McKinley and Halliburton were charged after several victims identified them as the assailants in the shooting. They are both locked up in the Shelby County Jail on four counts of attempted murder and four counts of using a firearm in the commission of a felony. Halliburton is being held in lieu of $500,000 bond, and Kenny has a $1 million bond due to his lengthy rap sheet, which includes callers for aggravated assault, kidnapping, and domestic violence. All right, my advice to you is stay away from Taco Bell Diablo sauce, for one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Stay away from Lori Morgan's spicy hot chicken coop, for two. 
Uh, don't ever order uh, anything spicy ever again in your life because in my estimation there really is very little that is too spicy. Uh, these 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 come pre-packaged, so it's not like yeah. the employees are spicing them up on purpose. Yeah, they're not they're not add, they're not double dousing that whatever it comes. And, it's pre-breaded. Right, and and whenever I go to a restaurant and I see the word spicy, my first question is how spicy is it? And, oh, I ask that all the time. And usually if they say, well, it's not that spicy, I say, can you make it that spicy? <laughs> can you try to hurt me, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have, acid reflux. <laughs> exactly. That's all I have an esophageal constriction. <laughs> and I drink a lot of milk, too. Yeah. Of <laughs> and that put, you know what? That puts the fire out. Oh, At 2 yeah. o'clock in the morning, you'll, whatever is going to douse that flame. Oh, yeah. An Acne man was arrested Sunday after police say he threatened to blow up at McDonald's because the restaurant didn't include dipping sauce for his chicken McNuggets. This whole McNugget chicken sandwich dipping sauce, hot sauce, man, this is getting out of hand. Every week is something new with this. You know, get over it. It's fast food. Sergeant Shannon with the Acne Police Department states that a 42 year old Goltz Witz Jr. called the McDonald's on West State Street around 5.20 p.m. Saturday after discovering his order was incorrect. In the call, he allegedly threatened to blow up the restaurant and punch the employee. According to a cri criminal complaint filed, police reached out to Mr. Goldwitz, Goldwitz at the phone number the threat was called in from. Police say he admitted over the phone and later in an interview at the police department to making the threats. He has been charged with a Class D felony, false report of explosive or incendiary device. He was booked into the Polk County Jail and was released on bond later on Sunday. Don't you just love drive-thrus? You go through, you don't check your feed, you get home, and wow, it's wrong. Which, you know, in that case, the only time I've ever really complained, and I didn't go back and get more, I just called him and said, look, I ordered, and this, is, this had happened three times in a row, I ordered a sausage, egg, and muffin meal. You gave me a bacon, egg, and cheese meal. That does not sound like sausage, egg, and muffin. And Just call the, them. And this is the third time. They got a whiteboard back there. They're going to put your name on there, and you go back well, in there at your convenience to get the well, correct assignment. I didn't, she asked me my name, and, I, and she said, come, come in, and, and uh, we'll make it right. And I went, no, I don't want, you to, I, I don't want anything free. I don't want, you know, but I just want you to let you know, this is the third time this has happened. All I'm asking is, please just get it right. Yeah. This is, you know, this is not rocket science. It's, it's you know, I know you get really busy in the morning, and it's, it can be a difficult, busy, you know, job. But three days in a row? It's tough enough, you know, drive throughs in my opinion, move slow. And if I can walk in, I'm going to park and walk in and get it to go. But every once in a while, I have to use the convenience, I'm on a phone call, or... And I can't get off the phone call, but I can make my order real quick and then keep my keep talking business or what I'm doing and get up there. And if I want to stop and sit and look and make sure everything's in there, the guy behind me is sitting there, you know, tapping on the steering wheel, like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. So there's always that room for error, but it, they got these big monitors up there now. They can see what's going in that, what yeah. should be in that bag. Yeah. Now, if the car in front of me, I can see where the script could be. The car in front of me just pulls out and drives off. I drive up. I'm probably going to wind up with that guy's order. Well, now but they don't realize that. With this particular story, he forgot the dipping sauce. I don't know if it's honey mustard. I don't know if it's barbecue sauce. They I don't know yeah, what. I didn't no specify. But that's happened to me where you know I'd, I'd get something and I would order just you know specific kind of kind of sauce and I, they didn't give it to me or they right. gave me the wrong sauce. Do you know what I normally do? I look in the bag and go, ah, dang it, and I keep on going my merry way. <laughs> I don't go back in and say, I'm going to blow this place up yeah. and punch you in the face because you didn't give me my honey mustard. I'm the world's worst at getting sauces. And I might, I don't know, I might have told you this story one time. And he sends me to Taco Bell to get a couple of tacos and some burritos. It's, it's kind of late. We need something to eat. We just a little snack and then we're going to go to bed. And she goes, don't forget to get sauces because I'm really bad about not only sauces that we'll get it. I told the lady at the drive my wife says I'm really bad about getting sauces. They fill it, they literally, a brown paper bag this big, they fill it chock full 
a sauce of every kind. I mean, they were just chunking it all in there. And I came home and my wife goes, did you get any sauce? And I dumped that thing on the floor, made a huge pile of which one you want. <laughs> <laughs> we still have that sauce in the house. And do you know, a point of tribute for, about at least Taco Bell sauces, and this is before the pandemic and they started running a little and all that stuff. Taco Bell sauce, no matter which one it was, all the way from the mild all the way to Dabo, is the number one requested military uh, family member will call home or write home we going, want, we yeah. want sauces. Because trust me, those MREs need help. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> but that's they the are, number one. They are request. very good, but they do need some spice. They need, they they need, need some, some help. help. Yeah. And that's the number one. Send us Taco Bell sauce because we'll put that on everything. It's like Frank's hot sauce. We put that eat on everything. Now, I'm, I'm very good about sauces because I, I really want my Diablo sauce. And uh, so even if I'm just ordering like a burrito supreme or a couple of burrito springs, whatever, no sour cream, that's, yeah. my, that's my thing. Uh, I will that's say, a lot of people's thing. I, I will say, give me lots of Diablo sauce. And when I say lots of it, you know, I usually mean maybe six, but they will always load me down. Load you up. So I've got Diablo sauce coming out of my ears, so which you keep is great. In the car and just drive down the road. No, I don't suck on the. You don't suck on the I don't package. suck on the packs, but I do. You know, if I get like a frozen burrito, or if I get, uh, oh, yeah, you, know, yeah. if, you know, get chili or whatever, I'd, yeah, throw some because I'll, I'll put Diablo sauce um, on spaghetti, on lasagna. Oh wow! I'll, 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 I'll it's, like a regular, uh, it's a regular. It's uh, a regular condiment. Condiment. Now, I had a roommate, Davey Dave, had a brilliant idea because we were getting all these sauces. We had just a load of all these uh, Taco Bell sauces, uh -huh. and. But we kept them in a drawer. So I went to get some Diablo sauce, and I went, what happened to all the Taco Bell sauce? He goes, open the refrigerator. Brilliant, brilliant idea. He went to Dollar General and got some of those plastic squeeze bottles that you put like ketchup, ketchup, ketchup and mustard yeah. in. Uh -huh. and, um, and he emptied all those packets, put the mild in one, put the hot in the other, and put the Diablo in the third. He apparently had several hours and of then, free time. And then and then took a yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then took a, a sharpie and just labeled it mild, yeah. oh, wow. hot, That's a good Diablo. Idea. That's a good idea. So we didn't have all these packets of sauce, yeah. and all I had to do, all the others had to do, we wanted some sauce, just take it Shake out. Shake it up. There Turn you go. Go to Taco Bell. You get some more packets. You empty them into the little container, and there you go. Brilliant. Look, there's your Pinterest tip of the day. That's right. <laughs> yep. There you go. Well, that's all I had for on my side of the table today. I really don't have anything else. Anything else going on in the world? Um, not really. I uh, just want everybody to have a very, very safe and Absolutely. Uh, happy 4th of July. Salute our military, uh, past, present, and even the future. Those who uh, have listened you're, and you're, you're on your way in. If you're um, contemplating joining the military, it's a... It's a decision, but it's but it's a good decision. It really is. Um, we uh, we salute you, uh, future, for, uh, present, and former. And uh, take some time out. You know, every time the F F twenty twos fly over the beach. Oh yeah. I salute. I stand up. That's the sound of freedom when you hear those jets fly over. Oh yeah. Every time you see an American flag, um, give it a little salute or whatever. I remember back on Crete, uh, we'd have our own base fireworks, and we'd always finish off the fireworks with uh, Lee Greenwood, oh, proud to be an American. Yeah. And we do have our uh, flags flying. Uh, I've got some ground flags out in the island out front, and I have a makeshift flagpole in the side yard over here with our 3 by 5 flag waving in the breeze as we speak right now. There is a lot to be, a pr to be proud of with our nation and with our history. Absolutely. Don't let people take it away from us. Don't let people take it away from us. Well, we uh, want to thank everybody for taking the time today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed putting it on for you. We will see you next week. Right. And as always, thank you for just letting us be us. And I want to thank all the viewers, the both of you. <laughs> next time. <laughs>